Welcome to the show, I'm Kathy Ireland. Did you know that over 1 billion people around the world live without electricity? It is a global challenge to bring affordable, clean energy to everyone. Fred Ferguson, Chairman and CEO of Water Rotor Energy Technologies joins us to talk about his company's breakthrough patented technology and its ability to bring energy to even the most remote areas. Welcome, Fred. Well, thank you. I'm much appreciative of being here. Well, Fred, could you please tell us a bit about the, the parts of the world where electricity is difficult or impossible to come by? Over one billion people are either without electricity or are unfortunately getting electricity they either can't afford or could do better with. We see the Philippines and Indonesia as needing better electricity and areas that don't have enough electricity. Africa has all kinds of problems that could be corrected where electricity provides sort of the, the soul to life and moving forward. And in many cases, there just isn't any. Fred, could you give us a sense of how your technology could bring electricity to a remote island? How would you set it up? Yeah, so a good example would be Micronesia. They have electricity now. They've got beautiful resorts, etc. But the resorts have high prices because they can't get electricity less expensively than 65 cents per kilowatt hour. It's about eight times more than your home electricity. In this particular case, Micronesia is sitting within an ocean stream that runs in one direction all the time. So my guys went over, took a look, and we decided that we'd give them a demonstration site, power a school, and, but more than that, be able to propose that we can give them electricity at less than 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Where we look at potential early markets are things like, just as you said, islands, the Caribbean at 40 cents, 44 cents, uh, Bermuda, same price, anywhere where they're burning any kind of a liquid fuel, diesel or turbine. So we can go in and augment at one-tenth uh, cost drop. In other words, one-tenth of the price. That's exciting. So that's the affordability factor. Is water rotor clean as well? Yes. So it's great to be doing something that we believe is going to be a new breakthrough for the world. But at the same time, it's got to make economic sense. As I learned in the late 80s, it wasn't just a matter of making something better and mission-oriented but you had to impress your banker as well. And he didn't really care about the technology. He wants to know what's the bottom line. So in this particular technology, and as we move into anywhere where there's either fuel being burned to produce electricity, or where governments realize they've got to do something better, that's where we basically focus as a first potential global markets. What about the ongoing maintenance for this? Fiscally. We look at 10 years as basically the depreciation cycle. We look at 360 days of 365 as the operational cycle. 24 hours a day, every day, except for five days of the year. And that five days is an allowance to be able to clean parts and things like that. And that's how you get to the low cost per kilowatt hour because there's no fuel involved. Right. How does your invention impact marine life? And what about fishing and boating Yeah, industries so this is well? where we really start to break through. There are a couple of breakthroughs on this. One is that we extract more than 50% of the power. But the other is we're rolling at the same speed as the water that's flowing over it. So it creates a pressure bubble, similar to a rock on the bottom of a river or what have you. Mm -hmm. And fish don't typically bump into things. But it's a soft device, meaning there's no cross blades like a per turbine or a propeller right. or what have you. The two key features, of, uh, apart from extracting a lot of energy, mm -hmm. are, is that it's got to be somewhat simple, very robust, because the amount of energy in water is unbelievable. We see tsunamis at 15 or 20 miles an hour knocking a train off the tracks. So, Everybody that's been out there in tidal flow and other systems has run into the problem of the volatility of the water. Nice thing about this is I like to say to people, hey, we can build these out of concrete if you want. You could probably extract energy from lava flow if you wanted to be stupid enough to put one in, but it'd actually survive. 
Fred, where can we expect to see the water rotor in action in the coming years? Right now, there's one that's being operated by the Canadian government in the middle of Canada in a river uh, that's normally uh, running due to a dam in the area. As an architect, we use the best of contractors to build these things. And then, as an architect, we plan on basically turning this out to one or more of the major companies. People say, where's the risk? The risk is actually if we try to do it ourselves. You know, sometimes the analogy is I hear, gee, you're starting a whole new evolution or a whole new area in, uh, in, in new renewable energy. Um, this particular device is analogous to say the Wright Brothers' first fliver, but the mistake they made is they manufactured. I mean, where's the Wright Brothers company today? And yet they started it all. So we're trying to be smart enough to say, no, this will move out to at least one or more of the big companies, a GE, maybe it'll revive Westinghouse. There's a brand name that should go somewhere. And, um, and let others basically do it. So it's that kind of a story. Fred, it sounds like Water Rotor Energy Technologies is filling a real need for clean, affordable energy around the globe. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, we're getting there. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. I'm Kathy Ireland.